Hi and welcome to Mr. Ford's Guide to the A Plus Certification Exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this video, we take a look at storage. So welcome back. In this video, I want to take a look at storage. Now storage is the ability of a device to retain data, either temporarily or permanently. And we're little quotation marks here because permanently is a it's a relative term, shall we say. For example, you have RAM, which will turn you lose memory once you turn the computer off. And then you have a hard drive, which is supposed to retain the information permanently. But as we'll see, hard drives are, they fail. So anyhow, storage can take the form of hard drives, RAM, floppy drives, CDs, DVDs, flash drives, etc., etc., it's where information is stored. So let's start with the probably the most well-known storage type device. And that, of course, would be something like a hard drive. So here is a hard drive. Okay, a little bit of an older hard drive, but you can see. And you can probably see my screen. Ooh, see the secrets of what I'm doing. You can see the screen. Um, but this is a hard drive. Now, also, just as a side note, if you take a look at the bottom here, you see that green stuff on the bottom right here? Okay, that looks a lot like the motherboard. That's because it's made of the same material, the printed circuit board. So this is a hard drive. This is the predominantly, probably the most well-known, most thought of when we talk about things for, like storage. Okay, hard drive, the majority of hard drives are magnetic storage devices. They store data magnetically on individual disks or platters. And so you can see that you have a reading and writing to a disk the platters are made up of aluminum or glass and coated with a magnetic medium. Now, again, here is a warning for hard drives. Your most valuable information is stored on your hard drive. Your family pictures, your tax information, counting information. Um, this is your most important part of the computer. Your data is the most important part. And of all the components on a computer that are most likely to fail, this is it. This is the most likely device to fail on a computer. In fact, hard drives fail. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. All hard drives break. All hard drives die. And again, it's not a matter of, you know, no, not my hard drive. Yes, your hard drive will eventually crash, die, burn, all that fun stuff. And so data backup is very, very, very important. And we will take a look at how to do that and how to wipe drives again in other chapter videos we have one just on hard drives alone, so no worries there. The next type of drive, which is a newer one to the field, is called a solid state drive, an SSD. You're gonna find your solid state drives more on your tablet computers, more on some of your really lightweight um, laptops. So for example, I have an iPad here. This iPad doesn't have a hard drive like this. This hard drive has movable parts. So, for example, when your computer starts up, you might hear, okay, the starting up of the drive. You don't hear that with devices like this. This has a hard drive, but it's going to be a solid state drive. It's going to be much more like a flash drive, a memory chip. And so you're going to see your solid state drives more on your um, smaller devices, more on your lower end devices, mobile devices, definitely. So that's a solid state drive. It uses less electricity, all that good stuff. So there's some good and bad to the SSD. Uh, it's very quiet because there's no movable parts. It's resistant to shock. Again, no movable parts. It's, you can drop it to a degree and it won't die on you. It's thinner than traditional hard drives. I mean, again, if you take a look at this hard drive and you take a look at this iPad, okay, you couldn't put this in this anymore. And so you can make these a lot thinner. Longer battery life for portables, again, because there's no movable parts, and they create less heat. Now, the bad part is, because you're probably going, well, if they're so great, why do we still have these guys? Because the solid-state drives are a lot more expensive. So you might be able to get twice the space on an old traditional hard drive for a lot less than half the space on the solid-state drives. So now, I'm sure once the technology becomes more widespread, which we're seeing happen, the prices will come down. It's usually how technology goes. The next device I want to talk about is your random access memory, your RAM. This is your, your memory here. Okay, This is your 
random access memory. It's your memory stick. Now, this is going to store information temporarily, so it's volatile memory. It's volatile, meaning the minute you turn off the power, this information goes away. Now, I'm not really completely accurate on that point. There is a period of time that they found that once the computer's turned off, you can still pull data off of this. But for all practical purposes, when the power goes out, data on here goes away too. From a consumer point of view, what's the difference between this and this? Because we both said these are storage. From a consumer point of view, this is your storage. This is where you store information. And this is your memory. Okay, so RAM stick is your memory. This is your storage. Again, from a consumer point of view, those are different. Then we have things like optical disks. Optical disks, for example, a CD or a DVD or Blu-ray. The reason why they're called optical disks is because light in the form of a laser is shot into the disk and it's either bounced back or it's absorbed. And like we said with the processing, we're also dealing with zeros and ones. If it is reflected, if light is bounced back, if it's reflected, it's read as a one, meaning power on, signal sent. If the information is absorbed, not reflected, just sucked away, then it's read as an off or a zero. And then we have the old floppy drives. Can't find any floppy drives around my household, uh, but these are old legacy devices that can store very little information. Uh, the last version of floppy drives were the three and a half inch floppy disks. You can still find these in some circles, uh, but again, these are pretty much on the average consumer computer. These things are gone, they're, they're dead. Nobody's really using them anymore. Although I am sure that you can probably find some people out there who still use them. Then we have read-only memory. Now, what's really cool is how the read-only memory, the flash memory, has really taken off. So, for example, I've got my digital camera here. And I'm going to open up the side. And I'm pulling out the memory stick. This is my SD memory card. And that's 32 gigs, giggity giggity, of information. So I can put 32 gigs on this, let me just appreciate this for a second, 32 gigs on this little bad boy, okay? The floppies that we just talked about were, were bigger than this, physically bigger, but didn't store half or even a quarter of the information that you can put on one of these little, little doohickeys right there. So read-only memory, also known as ROM, this is a special type of RAM that does not need electricity to keep its information. So unlike RAM, where I'm putting the memory card back, Unlike RAM, where if you turn off the power, the information goes away, ROM holds the information. It retains the information. So power goes out, it still retains your information. ROM is no longer just read-only. So ROM used to stand for read-only memory, meaning you couldn't write anything. Once it was written, it was done. It's no longer like that. In fact, today's ROM is... You can play with it, you can update it, you can change it, all that fun stuff. So today's ROM might also be called firmware. So you might hear that you have to do a firmware update, let's say on your smartphone. That's the ROM. You can update firmware, for example, on your smartphone, like I said, your computer, your printer. Printers have got little computers inside of them. Your car, yes, your cars have got little computers inside those too. You can actually update your uh, ROM on your car. Game console digital camera, etc., etc. So ROMs evolved over the years. We had PROM, which was programmable read-only memory. This would come from the factory with all the information on it. You couldn't change it. You couldn't update it. It was just there. It was etched in stone. Then we had EPROM, which was erasable programmable read-only memory. And to change the information on it, you used to have to hit it with some UV rays. You would boosh with UV rays. Then you could write to it. Then we had EEPROM, which was electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. Now, I am happy to say for the certification exam, you don't have to know what EEEPROM stands for. You just need to know which what, what kind of ROM does what here. The EEPROM, the elect electrical erasable, programmable, read-only memory, could be changed via electricity from a computer or other devices. So this was something that we could actually start to update. Now, the most current type of ROM is your flash memory. So the card I just showed you from my from my camera, your thumb drives, okay, these are all flash 
memory here. This is this is your flash memory. You can update it, you can change it, you can delete it, you can add to it, all that fun stuff. And very similar to your flash drive. So those, that's an overview of the different storage devices. In our next video, we're gonna start taking a look at different input devices.